So guys, I want to ask the question, is this the riskiest P-Base ever? Let's open it up, find out. Hey, it's James here from E-Base Guitar, and in just a moment, I'm going to be unboxing the Hammer Okamoto Signature Fender P-Base sent to me from Japan. Now, there's a story behind this because I've already been burned and I swore I'd never buy a bass again without playing it. But I've done just that. So let me tell you, first of all, the story behind this. So back in late 2020, I was working on an album and producing it in a small studio in West London, owned by a wonderful guy called Luke Oldfield. Tilehouse Studios, check it out. And the studio bass in there was a Fender Precision bass. We were in there probably for a, a week or two, and every day I'd pick this bass up and have a noodle on it, and it would just grow on me every single day. And the reason was it had this beautifully slim neck, and I went from going, mm, I'm not sure about Precision basses, going, I want one of these. So when I asked Luke about this bass, he told me this is an original 1962 Precision bass. And I thought to myself, wow, if only I could grab one of those. So after a bit of digging around, and it came to absolutely no surprise to me, these 62 Precision basses were mega money, but also pretty rare too. So it made me think, is there a good reissue around? So I was chatting to my dad's friend, Kevin, and he said, try this bass out. I think you might like it. It was a mid-2000s Japanese Fender bass, which he'd strung up with low tension to mastic strings. I picked this bass up and it was again, this is lovely. I really, really want one of these. So I ended up having this bass on long-term loan and throughout the early 2021, I played nothing else but this bass and you'll see it on a ton of e-bass guitar videos. But sadly for me, Kevin didn't want to sell this bass. So I went on a bit of a hunt to see if I could find something similar. So being in the middle of COVID, it wasn't the simplest thing just to go to a music store and try out a ton of basses. So I thought to myself, let's hunt one of these down. If I find a Fender Precision from the mid 2000s, it's gonna be similar. I found one through a mutual friend and got it sent to me. Took it out of the case, hoping for exactly the same thing. It felt completely different. I love the color, the Olympic white, but the neck just wasn't for me. And I discovered after a little bit of digging around that this was because it had a one and five eighths nut width at the end, rather than the one and a half inch, which Kevin's bass had. So I tried super hard to get used to this bass, but it just wasn't for me. So about six months ago, I took it to Oasis Music in Ringwood to sell on commission for me. A couple of weeks back, they rang me and said, we've sold it. And remarkably, they got the masking price for it. So after the commission was taken off, I was at about break even again, which put me in an amazing place to start my P-Bass hunt again. So I sent Kevin a message to just see on the off chance if he wanted to sell that P-Bass. Naturally, he didn't because it's amazing. But he said, I've just discovered these guys called Fender Fever, which are Fender dealers which specialize in rare Fender instruments. Why didn't you give them a call? Here's the model number of my bass, a PB70. See if they can get something for you similar. So I emailed them. They then got back to me and said, we can't get you a PB70 with a one and a half inch nut width. We don't have any of those at the moment but why don't you have a look at the Hammer Octomoto signature model bass? I'd never heard of this guy, but they said basically what it is, is a Fender P bass body with a jazz neck. And then it fell into place. That was what I've been looking for all of this time, a Fender P bass with a jazz bass neck. So the interesting thing I then learned was Hammer Okamoto was a signature artist in Japan and Fender make a ton of instruments for their Japanese and Australian market which don't make it into the UK or America. So to find this bass, I had to go hunting on eBay. So having made my money back on the Olympic white bass, much more confident in knowing what I was looking for, I thought, what the heck? Let's get this sent over from Japan. My friends at Oasis Music out there said, there's a good chance that you'll just get your money back again on this because it's so rare in the UK, I'd go for it. So about 10 days ago, I hit that buy button, ordered it from Japan and it's just turned up. Now, ultimately, I've got no idea what to expect here, but I wanna open it with you guys and see if I'm right, see if this is what I'm looking for. 
So let's get on with it and check out if this is the riskiest P base ever. Hey guys, just got a quick favor to ask if you are enjoying this video, please do hit that red subscribe button, which is somewhere around this video. What this means for you is you'll be the first to know when we release new base educational content on this channel. What it means for us is that we can keep growing our YouTube channel. The more reach we get, the more great quality videos that we can make. And this just makes the world keep going round. So please hit that red subscribe button. It will help us out more than you know. So let's get stuck in and open this base up all the way from Japan. Now it's come in a beautifully sealed small fender box. Let's get the trusty key out and start seeing what's inside. Okay, opens from the top end here. Let's start sliding this out. So first thing I discover in the box, is a manual. I've definitely never seen one of these on a fender base before. Strap for the case, I assume, of some description. And this is enormous pick warranty. A few moments later. And here's the base in a gig bag. Let's see what's inside. Let's take the top off here. Inside. Decent quality Fender gig bag here. Always nice to have. Love it when a new base comes with a gig bag. Always a good touch. Now, the moment of truth. Let's see if this neck and the body weight is what I'm after. Certainly feel, I'm hopeful. Wow, serious packaging. Yeah. Let's try it. The moment of truth. Yes, I think I've got it right. So let's give you some more first impressions of this bass guitar. So slim here up at the nut, gets a little bit thicker in the neck there, which I wasn't quite expecting, but I know I can get used to that. Nice body weight, feels like it's got good balance already. Now it comes with the chrome hardware there, which is cool. Standard precision controls there, volume and tone. We have the old school 60s finger rest here, where so you can play with your thumb. Got the tortoiseshell scratch plate. Lovely fender top here. Got the man himself, Hammer Optimo signature there at the top there. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's plug this in, see what it sounds like. So I've tuned the bass up, I've plugged it in, I've turned everything up full here. Let's hear what this sounds like solo. So yeah, that is that Fender Precision, that beautiful mid-range clank that I was so used to. So I'm already really liking this bass already. It has the nut width I'm looking for. It's a great weight. It feels really good. Initial impressions, this was a little bit fatter than I was expecting it to be for a jazz bass neck, but it's nothing I can't get used to. I'm really looking forward to digging into some of the sounds. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give you three tone tests using these strings here. So these are the round round strings which came from the shop. Then I'm going to change the strings to those legendary Tomastic low tension strings so you can hear the sound that I originally fell in love with when I borrowed Kevin's bass. So let's check this out. Here we go, this is finger style, check it out. See what it's like with the tone control turned down so you can get more of that old school sound. Check it out. P-Bass is famous for is that legendary rock clank. So I'm going to grab out the pick, I'm going to turn the tone control up full, and I'm going to play hard and aggressive. Check this out.
Take off the bridge cover here and get this strung up so it sounds really old school. Let's check it out. There we have it. We now have the Tomastic low tension flat wound strings. And it just shows you never stop learning with this stuff. This bridge is very different to anything I've seen before. It has these multiple grooves across it. So you can almost control where you're placing the strings in relation to each other. Very cool. Something I'm gonna experiment in with in due course. But let's hear how this sounds now. Yeah, it has that feel that Kevin's bass had all those years ago. So I'm gonna put the tone control here on about a third on there. So you get a little bit of top end, but not too much. So I'm gonna have a jam now with the drums because I finally found that sound, that tone and that feel, which I've been looking for for about three years now. Check it out. Guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you can see that the risk has paid off here. I certainly didn't know what to expect, but the one thing I've taken from this experience is even after 20 plus years of playing, keep learning, keep discovering, because you'll find interesting new things, such as the nut whip, which I didn't realize was so critical for my own playing. But I'm super glad that I found this bass that I really, really like, the Hammer Octomu bass. Take a chance, get a bass sent in from overseas. It might just be the thing that you really love. Anyway, I'll catch you next time. So, let's, oh God. Let's open it up, find out. <laughs>